may have seen this popular Flutter architecture diagram before, with the Flutter embedder on the bottom to talk to the host platform, the engine above that to manage graphics, and the Flutter framework on top, written in Dart, acting as the API that Flutter developers spend most of their time interacting with. Well, it's about to look a little different. We're decoupling the Material and Cupertino design libraries from the core Flutter framework. Let me tell you about why we're decoupling, how we're decoupling, what the timeline looks like, and most importantly, how this change will affect you and your Flutter apps. One of Flutter's core founding principles was that the framework needed to come with the batteries included. Whenever someone installs Flutter and runs Flutter Create for the first time, they should already have everything that they need to build a beautiful app right out of the box. The widgets, material, and Cupertino libraries were some of those proverbial batteries that needed to be included with Flutter, so they were bundled up with the framework and shipped to developers. Let's zoom in a bit. When you're new to Flutter, these three libraries are among the first things that you'll learn about, given that they likely make up a majority of your Flutter API interactions. The material library has all of the material and Android-related UI components, and Cupertino contains all of the iOS UI components, and finally, the widgets library contains all of the core foundational widgets that both Material and Cupertino depend on, right? Not necessarily. Take a look at this selection area widget. It's the widget that you use to present selectable text in your Flutter app. You look at this code and think, pure widgets, right? Wrong. Try to run it without importing Material, and what do you get? An error that says, surprise, I'm hiding in the Material library. Okay, maybe that's not exactly what the error says, but you get my point. But why is selection area in the material library? Because selection area is adaptive. It presents the material selection UI by default, and when it detects an iOS runtime, it quietly switches to Cupertino. This way, you get the correct selection UI for free just by using selection area. That means that under the hood, selection area needs to access material buttons, theming, and colors on Android, and Cupertino buttons, theming, and colors on iOS. So not only does Selection Area live in the Material Library, but it also imports Cupertino so that it can be adaptive. While you can technically implement your selectable text widget from scratch using only the widgets library, it would take about 200 lines of code just to work on Android. Admittedly, this cherry-picked example is one of the most complicated across the entire framework, but it illustrates the challenge of separating basic functionality from opinionated design rules. I think it reveals that instead of the framework looking like this, it kind of looks a little bit more like this. An underdeveloped widgets library, a hefty material library that has absorbed too much core functionality, and a Cupertino library that's a little too dependent on its material counterpart. The immediate availability of Material and Cupertino widgets in the framework that led to this state has played a big part in why so many developers love Flutter and why it's gotten to where it is today. However, as Flutter has grown, this tight coupling has come with the cost of slower adoption of new design features, since design changes are tied to the framework release cycle, breaking changes that pop up whenever there are design updates, limited support for an ecosystem of design libraries since most developers just have to use Material as their starting point. And last but not least, a slow and complex contribution process needed for minimizing the risk of framework regressions whenever a change is introduced to Material or Cupertino. This is the inherent issue of scaled impact. These once acceptable trade-offs have compounded into real friction points that developers have to work through. Today, Flutter powers more apps and receives more open source contributions than we ever could have imagined 11 years ago. In fact, there are over 50,000 open source packages available on Pub right now, and many of those are design libraries, just like Material and Cupertino, that developers can pick up and use right out of the box. As you'd imagine, the needs of a scrappy little framework that just a few developers know about compared to those of a framework that's being used by over a million developers each month are, well, quite different. It's no surprise that Flutter has outgrown some of its founding principles. That's why we're evolving Flutter to better support developers in 2026 and beyond by moving the Material and Cupertino libraries from the core framework into their own pub packages. It's a project that we call Decoupling Design in Flutter. You can read all about it here, but if you don't want to read an 11-page doc right now, let me tell you what's happening. 
While we could try to do a quick cut and paste from the Flutter Flutter repo to the Flutter packages repo and call it a day, that would probably end up being the biggest breaking change in Flutter history. We definitely don't want that. There are four important areas that we're going to tackle in the process of decoupling. Here's a quick overview. First is system UI. We're determining where the line is between design libraries and their platforms. So what's the overlap between Material and Android, Cupertino and iOS? This includes everything from the text selection UI seen in our earlier selectable text example to page transitions. Wherever we draw these lines, we'll make sure that Flutter apps have easy access to system UI and will feel at home on whatever device they're running on. Second, we'll be improving code organization with the goal of empowering design library authors by creating more raw widget abstractions in the widgets library. Third is theming. As it currently stands, Materials theme and Cupertino theme don't share a common ancestor, and widgets has no theming at all. So we're in the process of evaluating whether there are any theming changes that we can make to better support those developers who aren't using Material or Cupertino. And finally, our Material and Cupertino widgets currently use a lot of infrastructure in the Flutter Flutter repo, like the CI pipelines that run all the tests. So we're going to be reviewing, refactoring, and migrating over 200 tests from across the Material, Cupertino, and Widgets libraries to make sure that we avoid cross-importing from each other. Sorry, engine tests, you can't come along. As you can see, there are a lot of decisions and changes to be made as we work towards decoupling design. With every change that we make, it's our top priority to only introduce breaking changes when they're absolutely necessary. For example, many of you have asked about Material 3 Expressive and Liquid Glass. In an effort to minimize breaking changes that would make it more difficult to migrate to the new packages, we're putting a hold on landing any new major design updates until we've fully completed decoupling. So that sounds like a lot of work, right? Let me tell you about the reward that we'll get for doing all that effort. Breaking out these libraries will enable faster design evolution. Both the Material and Cupertino libraries will be able to adopt new design trends and ship updates much faster once they're no longer tied to Flutter releases. The framework will also be more durable as we'll see fewer breaking changes caused by design updates. Flutter itself will better support a wider range of third-party design libraries. Rather than building new design libraries on top of opinionated material widgets, design library authors can use raw widgets from the widgets library. Decoupling will also empower the Flutter community to contribute to Material and Cupertino without having to worry about how their contribution could become a regression in the framework. We're going to be executing the decoupling design project plan over three key phases. Right now, as of December 2025, we're in phase one. We're working to ensure Flutter has a solid foundation for decoupling. This means we're moving common and core logic that currently lives in the Material and Cupertino libraries into the widgets library. We're also setting up the Flutter packages repo with all of the necessary infrastructure to support Material and Cupertino. Phase two will kick off next year in 2026 when the actual decoupling will happen. This is when we'll put the new Material and Cupertino code in the Flutter packages repo and publish the libraries on pub. After that, we'll deprecate the old libraries in the main Flutter Flutter repo. Finally, with phase three in late 2026, we'll remove the original deprecated Material and Cupertino libraries from the framework. Once we reach this phase, we'll be able to fully take advantage of the new decoupled architecture. So the big question, how does this decoupling of design libraries actually impact you as a Flutter developer? Well, there's actually no immediate impact right now as of the time of this recording in December 2025, since we're still in phase one. However, once everything's all said and done, here's how decoupling will affect you. Inevitably, there will be some breaking changes. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to do our very best to limit breaking changes, but I just wanted to mention it again for transparency. We'll of course include quick fixes wherever possible so that it's easier for you to migrate. If you're using Material or Cupertino in your app, you'll be able to manage design updates more predictably with semantic versioning on each package. This means you'll be able to pin the specific Material or Cupertino version that you're using independent of the framework, and you won't have to update it if you don't want to. 
If you're building custom non-material and non-Cupertino designs for your apps, that's gonna be much easier using the low-level set of raw widgets. For example, Raw Radio is already available in the widgets library. It's the underlying widget for Materials Radio and the Cupertino Radio widgets. And finally, if you're a Flutter contributor, you can expect that it will be easier and faster to contribute to the Material and Cupertino libraries. Decoupling means the contribution process will be more focused and easier to manage, which, as a result, facilitates quicker iteration and review cycles. As Flutter evolves and grows with our developer community, there is one core philosophy that continues to hold true. Our commitment to enabling developers to productively build beautiful and performant applications that users love. We're really excited about these changes, and we hope you are too. Huge thank you to the Flutter community for your continuous collaboration and feedback throughout this project. The community reaction has been such an encouraging sign for those of us on the Flutter team. We hosted a Reddit Q&A and received tons of great questions and valuable feedback, so thank you. Hopefully I've given you a good sense of how we're going beyond a cut and paste of Material and Cupertino to make this framework that we love even better. If you wanna stay up to date with our latest project progress, check out the GitHub issue. All right, that's just about everything that I have to share about decoupling design in Flutter for now. Thanks for watching.